Remember, please uh, put your mics on mute. And if you, if you want to uh, ask a question of Sean today, feel free to turn it on. And, and he loves questions. He's happy to answer anything you have. You also can put it in the chat. And, and I can uh, answer it for you. Um, well, I'm sorry, not answer, but uh, send it to Sean and let him know what you're asking him. And we can go from there. But obviously, you know, very dear friend of mine uh, from college, uh, one of my roommates, uh, incredible career. Um, and you guys probably see him on TV now. He's still on TV, which is awesome. We love watching him. But we're going to start off this video and then we'll get into the, the whole deal here. One more person to admit. All right, here we go. The great thing about this game is every year you have to prove yourself. Every year there's new challenges. That is about one thing, being physical, all right? The first flight to the last. Hold on, one, two, three, hold on. Rolls right, throws right, wide open, touchdown. His first of the season. That's hustle. That is what team work is about. He throws a big block. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it back over to our PowerPoint today. And uh, I'm going to let Sean take it away. All right, Sean, it's your show. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Brady. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, it's, uh, it's great to uh, see everybody virtually. And uh, I'm really honored <laughs> to spend a little time with you guys this morning. Um, I, I trust that each and every one of you got a workout in already. Um, nobody's, nobody's slacking. Nobody's putting it off until uh, after lunch because you know, it ain't happening. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I really appreciate, uh, Brady asking me to, to come on and have a chance to, to share, you know, my experiences and, and some of the things that I've gone through with you guys. Um, you know, the first thing that, that I'll say is, um, you know, for a lot of you, a lot of you guys that are in high school or, or, or college, um, guys that are playing football right now and have aspirations to play at the next level, um, whether that be college football or, or if you're in college, the next level being the NFL. And um, the one thing I just want to share with you guys is, you know, that, that was me. I was you. Like there, there was a time when I was in high school. I know, you know, Coach Brady just showed you the highlight reel, right? And, and that's like, you know, that's like sitting down at Thanksgiving and all the foods in front of you and you're just looking at this wonderful feast. You have no idea that there were, you know, how many chefs and how many people were sweating in the kitchen to make all of that stuff happen. So, um, you know, it's funny. We, we always kind of start at the finish line and I like to kind of bring it back to the starting line. And, you know, I was a young kid, started playing football in fifth grade and just fell in love with the game. And, you know, since I was a little kid, I, I always wanted to be a professional football player. It was either that or professional wrestling. So thank God <laughs> football worked out. Um, but, you know, I kind of went through some awkward years and went into high school. And, you know, my freshman year in high school, everybody called me Ralphie. I had glasses and braces and I was chubby. And, you know, I just kind of came into my own in high school. And, you know, the thing that I, the reason why I share what I'm sharing right now is I, I want to encourage all of you guys, like, look, it, it the finish line is is to be determined by you and what you do daily. You keep your eyes on that, but you've got, you've got to work towards things. And people see that highlight. They see the Super Bowl stuff. They see the accolades. You know, even right now, we're, you guys are looking at Hillsborough High School, Rutgers University, first team all the East. Here's what, here's what it doesn't say on there. When I was in high school, I had coaches come in and say, we don't know if you're big enough to play Division One football. I had people tell me, hey, hey look, you know what, you know, it's hard to get a scholarship. We don't know if you're going to be able to, you know, be big enough. And sure enough, I didn't get any, not one single division one offer. I got some one double a interest, but I had people telling me, we don't know if you're big enough. So in high school, nobody was telling me, Hey, you're going to play in the NFL. So the message with that is 
you are in charge of your life and your destiny, or you are the one that controls it. And the only way you can achieve your dreams, not by listening to the noise. And believe me, you guys have more noise now than ever. When Brady and I, you know, were in high school, we had television, radio. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have social media. We didn't have any of that. You know, if you said something dumb, or if you know, if you got dumped by a girl, you, you, you there's a chance that nobody in the whole school knew about it till after school got let out. You know, like you, you don't have to worry about stuff spreading like wildfire. So, I walked on at Rutgers. I, I believed in myself. I felt like you know what, I I can earn a scholarship, and. Lo and behold, I did. And I came in, Brady and I came in together. You know, I can remember like it was yesterday. We were both, you know, true freshmen coming in. Um, you know, Brady was, you know, an All-American coming out of Pennsylvania. And he started as a true freshman, which was unbelievable. Um, you know, and, and not just started on special teams. I mean, he was in there playing linebacker, um, you know, wrecking shop. And, uh, and it was great. I mean, here's this kid that came in playing safety, and now he's in there playing linebacker, right? Um, so, you know, it was – but it was, it was the growth in college that, you know, was not overnight. It was, it was, it was daily. It was weekly. It was 5 a.m. workouts, which everybody dreads. Like that's like the, you know, the toughest time in college football, but um, you know, it was, it was the goal setting that enabled me to get to where I am today. So in college it was, man, I want to make the team. I want to earn a scholarship and achieving those goals and then setting another goal. All right. Now that you're on scholarship, I, Hey, I want to become a starter. All right. Once you become a starter, that's great. I remember my dad saying, Hey, you're the starting left tackle for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. What's next? What's your next goal? And I said, well, I don't know. And he said, well, shouldn't it be, you want to be all big East. I'm like, that's a great goal. There it is. Okay. So my next goal was I want to make, you know, I want to make all big East. Well, then it happened. So, you know, you kind of progress for that, but uh, here's a great picture uh, of me, of Brady, of Dax Tromeyer, uh, the three of us, we were roommates uh, our freshman year when we came to Rutgers in 1995. And this was a big moment for us. Uh, as you, I don't know if you could see the scoreboard behind. It says Rutgers 36 and I think Navy 33. Was that, is that sound right? Or yeah. 35? It's something like that. Um, yeah. this, was, this was a big game. It was back and forth. Um, you know, Navy was always a, a tough challenge, but we had to lead and – Navy got the football back and we really had a hard time stopping them, you know, all, all day. They just, they, they were on that triple option. I veer, they're cutting linebackers. Everybody's getting their knees taken out. Um, and they had a pretty athletic quarterback. And I want to say it was, I don't know if it was first down or, or third down, but um, Dax ended up with a huge play rushing off the edge, sacks the quarterback, sack forced fumble, ball comes out. He recovers it. And uh, this was the aftermath photo of us walking off after a big victory uh, one of the few victories we had uh, during our time <laughs> on the banks. Uh, but yeah, it's great to see stuff like that. And so, you know, going back to what I was saying about college football, you know, the, the progression of, you know, all right, now I'm in college. Look, there was nobody telling me, hey, you're going to be a first round pick. You're going to be a second round pick. I, you know, guys told me you're good. You're a long shot to make in the NFL. You're, I went undrafted. So just like I had to walk on at Rutgers, I basically had to walk on in the NFL. And I share all that with you just to let you know that, you know, you don't have to be a first round draft pick to have a great career, you know, and you don't have to let people limit you. And, you know, people are going to say, Hey, look, that's, you know, that's a long shot, but um, you know, I think the biggest, the two biggest factors are, um, you know, are, are you disciplined and, and what does discipline mean? You know, I'm sure you've heard coaches throughout your careers talk about discipline. Well, that should come uh, you know, almost like an involuntary response. If somebody says the word discipline, I immediately think about my high school coach, Rick Mance. Yep. Discipline is doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it and without anybody telling you to do it. That's discipline. So how, how does that happen? I mean, you don't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to be disciplined. No, you have to do it in every aspect of your life. And, you know, Coach Tom Coughlin, I've had some phenomenal coaches uh, throughout my my career and Tom Coughlin had a, a, he would every practice at the top of his script for that day, he would have a quote, a quote of the day. And uh, one of his quotes was uh, be, be loose with me and, and I will destroy you. Be firm with me and I will place the world at your feet. Who am I? I am habit. Your habits will either destroy you or they will help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve. And the habits 
there's good and there's bad. Um, those are all a part of that discipline. So uh, not to get too preachy on you guys there, but the, the discipline is the one thing. And then the sacrifice, um, you know, uh, I'm going to quote Dave Steckel, who Brady loves dearly. <laughs> I love dearly. He was, he was our defense line coach, this crazy SOB. You know, <laughs> he, he had all kinds of great lines, you know. Uh, you know, when he would introduce us at the starting banquet, you know, we'd been in training camp for like two weeks and they'd bring all the moms and dads in for a weekend. And it was like before the season started and the coaches would introduce all the players. And, uh, and I'll never forget, he pointed out, he said, listen, you know, don't be alarmed if your kid, if your sons don't respond to their name, because for the last two weeks, they, they think their names are dad gummit and Jesus Christ. You know, like <laughs> he, he was that kind of, you know, that kind of personality. And, and he, uh, he coached hard, but they used to always say, you know, Hey, look, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody's willing to die to get there, right? Um, that was kind of one of his sayings. And, and I think that's, you know, pretty appropriate with sacrifice. You know, I usually, when I'm speaking to a group like this, I always say, all right, listen, who here wants to play in the NFL? You know, pretty much everybody raised their hand, right? Or most people. Um, so it's like, okay, everybody has that desire. And then what are you willing to sacrifice to achieve that? Um, you know, if you want to go to the NFL, if that's what you want to do, or you want to be a broadcaster, or you want to, you know, you want to be a firefighter, or you want to be a, an engineer, an astronaut, are you hanging around, hanging out and surrounding yourself with people that want to do that too? Because if not, you're, you, are, you, are you really sacrificing, you know, all, everything in life to get what you want to, to do? And, you know, so sacrifice is a big thing. You know, what are you willing to give up to achieve what you want to achieve and achieve your dream. And, um, you know, sacrifice can, can mean a lot of different things. It can mean the difference between going to bed at 10 o'clock like you should or staying up and trying to Snapchat with that girl. Um, it can, it can be something as simple as that, you know, watching TV or playing call of duty till 3 AM when you know you should be getting your sleep and getting your rest. Cause you got a big day. Um, th those are little sacrifices, but they build up into bigger things which goes along with the habits that I was talking about. So that sacrifice, um, you know, if, if you know you want to, to be somewhere, surround yourself with people that have those same aspirations, and it will be a lot easier to make those sacrifices. Um, here, here's a great shot of Super Bowl 42 with the confetti coming down. Um, <laughs> you know, I was talking to Brady before this, and, you know, it's complete pandemonium. You could see the confetti still coming down in the air. This is one of my favorite little shots. Kind of captures the moment. Chris Snee is showing off his four-inch vertical right there. Um, uh, you could see Mike Vrabel in the background, number 50 for the Patriots. Um, you know, and they're walking off the field. And, you know, we're kind of like, what do we do? Um, you know, I was telling Brady, the, the great crazy thing about the Super Bowl is you prepare for everything leading up to the game. You talk about every aspect. You go over every scenario. You walk everything the one thing you don't talk about is after the game what do you do there is no plan <laughs> there's no here's where you're going to go here's where you're going to line up you know we're, they're going to bring out the trophy they're going to do this stay on the field nobody tells anybody anything so we're just running around uh you know like chickens with their heads cut off and it's complete pandemonium so that kind of uh, always brings me back to that moment that's awesome let's go on to um transition so yeah, the guy on the left and the guy on the right, aside from the uh, helmet, the shoulder pads, and about 50 pounds, um, what, what's the difference? Well, I'll tell you, it's a, lot, a heck of a lot easier to talk about football than it is to do it. Um, and it's a lot safer to talk about football than to, to try to block guys that are 30 pounds heavier than you. But, um, you know, for me, really, it was I, I was so blessed throughout my career, just, you know, I, playing for the Cleveland Browns and then coming home to Jersey to play for the Giants it really just opened up so many doors. And I, and I remember talking to my dad one day and he's like, look, you might want to change your cell phone number. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're going to get inundated with you know, people are just going to be coming out at you. And, and I said, well, yeah, but you know, but I, I, I don't want to shut all those doors. So I never changed my number. And, and sure enough, like, you know, the opportunities were there. And the one thing I always said to myself was, look, I'm, I'm not going to say no to anything. And I think that was really, that was really a great experience for me. And I, and I tell people all the time, look, it's hard. How do you know what you want to do at 22 years old? Some people don't even know at 25 what they want to do. Uh, but I think, you know, my advice is do everything because after doing something once, you'll know like, okay, I, know, I, don't, I may not know what I want to do, but I know I don't want to do that. So if you go out and you experience it, like you, it will help you focus and streamline what you want to do. 
while I was playing football, there's a couple of guys that I kind of took note of. Mike Golick was on ESPN radio and I'm like, man, you know what? Like when I'm done playing, that sounds like an awesome job. Like just talking about football. My job is to watch football, to, to, to watch film, to study it, to talk about it. Like, so I thought, man, Mike Golick got a pretty good gig. And then Mark Schlereth uh, was on ESPN, Brian Baldinger. I, I started seeing some of these offensive linemen, you know, I love John Madden, you know, I mean, some of you guys may be too young to even remember John Madden, but to <laughs> me, it, it wasn't a Sunday. If I didn't hear Pat Summerall and John Madden calling a game on Fox or, you know, Monday night football or whenever the stage was. So I kind of seeing that it was like, man, you know what, like that would be really cool. And, you know, when you have a love for something like I have always had for football, that I found that as a way to stick around the game. So how does that happen? Well, it goes back to the goal setting, right? All right. What are your goals if that's what you want to do? So uh, basically anytime there was an interview opportunity or a chance to go and, and do a, uh, an appearance in New York, which there are an unbelievable amount of opportunities, uh, I took advantage of it and I got reps. And that was the whole thing was get comfortable in front of the camera. It's not easy to do. A lot of people get stage fright. They get camera fright. When the red light goes on, they, they just, you know, they start sweating. And, you know, look, I still get nervous sometimes when I go on set, but it was all about you have to get reps so you can get confident and get comfortable. And that's when you know, you start to enjoy it and your personality can come through. So for me, it was about all these reps and how much, uh, how many opportunities can I get? And then the NFL launched this broadcast boot camp that they do down at NFL Films. And uh, I jumped on that in 2010. And basically they take you through the car wash. You get to call half of a game in a booth. You go in studio, you do some reporting, you do some on-site journalism, and you kind of get to, you know, touch every different color of the paintbrush in like a three day little car wash and it was a great experience. It was great to see everything, um, you know, up close and personal and get your hands in, in every facet of it. But it also, there were executives there. There were people from Sirius radio from Fox and every year would say, Hey, what players were the broadcast boot camp that you thought might have a future in it. So um, I went around to everybody that I talked to during that three day process and I asked them for their business card. And I kept every single one of those cards and I emailed every one of those people two weeks after the broadcast boot camp and just said, Hey, you know, really nice meeting you and just established a connection. And I think, you know, you guys have heard the term networking a lot. And in today's world with LinkedIn and with social media, it's a lot easier. You can find somebody on Twitter or on Instagram or go online and find their Wikipedia. So you can contact people. So uh, now more than ever, there's no excuse to not be able to find somebody or contact or reach oh. or connect with somebody. So, so I, I got encourage two, you all to do. Sorry. I got two questions for you. I'm going to put them together. Yeah. They, kind of, they kind of go together. Um, two different people. Um, the first one is, did you have public speak, speaking in high school and did that, would that help? Um, or college. And the second question was academic as well. How did you balance football and school? Um, I'm assuming more of a college question, but if you could answer those two, thank you. Yeah, great question. You know, I'll say this. I, I think being a, a student athlete in college is tougher than being a, a professional athlete hmm. because you have to be, you basically, you have two jobs. You know, and, and they both really require 40 hours a week. So you're, you're kind of, you know, burning the candle at both ends. And, and right. I think, you know, I look back on it and, you know, I, I, I wish I was a better student. And I think it kind of goes back to what I was talking about with discipline and really time management is the biggest thing. And, and I think, you know, in college, there's so many times where, you know, some of the best days in college are when you didn't have any class, you had nothing going on. <laughs> But those, those days also ended up being the most unproductive Active. days, right? You know, like it, it, it was, it's weird when you think back on it, like your, your most productive days were days when you had three classes, you had to rush over there, you had to lift, you had to find a way to sneak in lunch, yep. and, you know, and then you had to be back at the facility by three o'clock and then you had to study all night and it's just, you know, it's, it's a lot. And I think balance is key. Um, as a student athlete at Rutgers, you get two educations. Um, you get an education in the classroom and then being a Rutgers student and trying to figure out which campus the double L bus goes to and the double <laughs> A goes to, and did I get on the right bus? Um, you get an education in life. And I, and I think that that's important too. So for the student athletes, um, you know, I, I think dedicate time 
don't wait till eight o'clock at night to say I'm going to study because by then you're you know you're 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 already probably tired from the day and you're going to get distracted. There's a lot of things to pull you away from things. Uh, I think that the best thing to do is to allocate time in the morning or during the day to to focus on on your schoolwork and and studying. Um, going to class is, is is such a big part of it, and you know obviously it's hard virtually uh, to to be there physically. But now with the virtual aspect of it, you know, you have no, there's no excuse. Like I, I missed the bus. No, like you can click on and, and unless your Wi-Fi goes out, you got no excuse. But uh, right. yeah, it's, it's time management, I think is a huge balance. Um, the other part of the question um, was, um, did public I do speaking. any personal public yeah. speaking classes? Yeah. You know, any personal communications? I was not a communication major. I went in as a math major and then I flopped around my first year. Brady knows it. Um, <laughs> my, my first year, I, I didn't do great in in school my GPA really suffered so business school was out and I changed my major to criminal justice uh, which a lot of guys were, were leaning towards but um, the I take a couple of intro classes and you know looking back on it I wish I had taken more public speaking because it's like anything you know you want to get stronger in the bench press you better throw some more plates on that bar and you better right. get out there and do it it's not just gonna happen you want to get better at public speaking practice in front of the mirror nowadays with with zoom and with skype you can call zoom create a zoom with a buddy and say hey look let's take 15 minutes and let's practice you know i'm going to give you um you know i'm, I'm going to take five minutes and i'm going to give you a rundown and run a highlight or practice this and then you do the same and then you know you have a chance to get reps um this is bob papa and me at training camp right here and um you know working for the giants right now what, what's been great is you know i get all kinds of reps and going and working with Bob Papa, Bob Papa is constantly doing stuff. Like people think, oh, he just calls game for the Giants. No, Bob Papa does serious radio. You, if you wake up in the morning, you're in your car, turn on serious radio, and whether it's 7 to 10 a.m. or 10 to 12, Bob Papa is probably on serious NFL radio. He does it five days a week. Wow. He also does the golf channel um, in, when, in the off season. Um, he covers everything for the Giants throughout the entire year, but he does all these other things. So even a guy like him is still getting reps. And I think – you know, like any craft, you're still honing it every single time you get a chance to get a rep. Hey, Sean, I think you made a great comment. Uh, we talked pr prior about the opportunities right now in the world with all, you know, with social media and all the po uh, podcasts and stuff like that. Could you talk about that for a second? Yeah, what a, what a great time. If you want to get into broadcasting, if you want to get into television, um, you know, the digital market right now is is exploding, as many of you know. Um, you know, look, when I was in college, it was, there was a couple of TV stations, there may have been a, the Daily Targum, the newspaper was an opportunity, and then there may have been like a local radio station, but, you know, that was it. You count on one hand, uh, one hand, how many opportunities there were and how many different avenues there were now with podcasts, with, um, with streaming video, with YouTube, with all the digital platforms, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, um, with Sirius, with, with Apple, with all those podcasts. I mean, you can create your own station and you can do, you create your own platform. So I think those opportunities are great. And, um, you know, some of the best you know, material out there is stuff that people just thought of, Hey, look, we're going to create, you know, like a Wayne's world, we're going to go in our basement, we're going to create a studio and we're going to do a show and we're just going to talk for 30 minutes about, you know, X, Y, or Z. It's going to be football or, you know, it's going to be beer making or bread making or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I think that you guys, you know, you can take the initiative. There's enough platforms out there to just start producing content, getting reps. And you're, by doing that, you're going to create your own little database uh, as well as you're going to build some confidence in what you're doing. So I encourage you, you know, do as much as you can, you know, especially um, you know, now with, with what you can do on your cell phone. I mean, you could shoot video, you could practice uh, doing an interview from pretty much anywhere in the world. That's fantastic. Another question uh, someone asked as far as if they wanted to get into broadcasting with your experience of being around other people in this business, um, is there a major uh, you would suggest or maybe a, a good university. I don't know if you know that or not. That was the question. Yeah. Well, um, the universities, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, given how many opportunities there are now, and I mean, barstool sports and, you know, you've got the tribune and you've got, you know, sports illustrators doing some digital. There, there are so many different opportunities. 
I think, you know, it's not like the old school where it's like, hey, if you want to be a broadcaster like Mike Tirico and like, you know, Scott Hansen, all the guys, Syracuse, you know, they have a great broadcasting school. You've got to, right. you've got to go there. I think people are finding ways that, look, I can go get an education in all these other places and then I've got to go out and get experience. So, you know, I, I don't think the two are exclusive. You know, it doesn't have to be this education and this experience. Sometimes the experience is more valuable than the education that you got. So uh, those two factors, I think, um, you know, you, you just have to find out what the good fit is for you. But, um, but as far as classes, I mean, I, I think, you know, any kind of communications class where you're learning about writing, where you're learning about speaking, um, you know, it's funny, I was talking to uh, somebody in my town the other day, and they said, um, you know, their kid can't read cursive. And I said, well, you know, what do you mean? You, you know, I, I, your son's like 10 years old. He's like, yeah, they're not teaching cursive in right. schools anymore. So <laughs> they can't, you know, and everything is on a phone. So it's all text message or a computer or an iPad. So kids are no longer learning cursive. So I think the communication aspect and, and, and person to person is still valuable. And I, and I would say any kind of communications classes, um, you could take sociology. Um, and then even, you know, look, I would encourage, take some psychology classes, because I think if you want to be in broadcasting or journalism, what is that business? Like re the reality of it, the, the reality of it is you're talking to people, you're reporting on people, you're reporting on their behaviors. So psychology is the study of all of that. So why wouldn't you want to have a little bit of a background, a little education from that aspect? Absolutely. Another question. Um, we got a couple minutes left, guys. So if you have or, or girls, if you have a question, please uh, ask it now or forever hold your peace. Um, this question, and it goes back to you mentioned. Uh, you liked math. I think you were a business guy coming to Rutgers, weren't you? Like interested in business and numbers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was my plan. Go to business school, and then uh, I, after my first year, they said, "Yeah, you need a three point to get into business school." I said, "All right, I better switch gears." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I was on the same plan. Um, uh, uh, the question was, did you think about? what you're doing now when you were in high school, did you ever imagine yourself or think, Hey, you know, we all think about that when we grow up, we all want to play in the NFL, right? That's, that's true. But after that, did you ever think about, that was the question. Do you ever think about being who you are now, the job you're doing? Honestly, no, I, I, I never thought that I would be in this situation. I, I never thought that, um, that this is what I would be doing, that I would be an analyst. Um, you know, I mean, I was hoping to play in the NFL. That was my dream, but you know, absolutely nothing, no, nothing. I never saw anything after that. Um, you know, I feel like this was just kind of a culmination of, of, you know, some, some, some great luck. You know, I'll be honest with you. If we don't beat the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 42, I, I might not have ever gotten a career. You know, it, it's, it's just wild how things work out wow. like that. You know, they part the fact that I had a Super Bowl ring really you know, helped me get my foot in the door and with the NFL network and, and get a job there. So, um, no, I think, you know, it, it's just, uh, that's the way that, that everything unfolded. Like I said, I, I was, I wanted to go into business. My dad was in pharmaceutical sales. So, you know, you kind of always want to follow in your father's footsteps. And, um, you know, I always look, you know, looked up to my dad. He was, he was my first and, and my, my biggest hero. Um, so I, I wanted to go into that and that's why I was going with business. And then once I shifted to criminal justice, you know, there was some thought about, all right, what am I going to do with that? I don't know, maybe secret service, you know, I, I think, I like to put my hands on people. So I, I felt like I need, it's gotta be some sort of a physical job. If I can't knock somebody on their ass or grab somebody and, and right. throw them down, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be a little feisty. <laughs> All right. Last thing, Sean, then we're going to let you go. I really appreciate your time today. Um, oh, hold on. I got one more question here. Let me ask, ask this question to you. Okay. Okay. This is a call. What made you pick Rutgers over another school? What should college, what should kids look for in a college when thinking about football? Yeah, great question. So for me, Rutgers was, um, you know, really that ended up being my selection for a couple of reasons. Number one, I told you I, I didn't get a scholarship coming out. So I had a couple of one double A offers, but I really wanted to play division one football. Um, I thought that, you know, I knew I was a little bit of a late bloomer and I thought I could get a lot bigger. Um, so that's why Rutgers really came into play. 
And then how much, my high how much school you coach, weighed, Rich, on when you got there, you weighed two ten, right? Yeah, you showed up. I was I was two thirty five when I I showed up, and I walked on okay. at Rutgers as a def, as a defensive end, right? And yep. even at two thirty five, I was still a little bit undersized, um, mm-hmm. you know. And then a year later, uh, I mean, I put on the freshman forty. Brady. <laughs> um, you know, Brady made me drink all kinds of beverages, um, and I think you just kind of Rutgers was it fit me. It, you know, I feel like I had a good fit. Number one, it was really close to home. You know, I mean, Brady used to cut, the guys used to tease me that I lived on, you know, 2000 Hamilton street. You know, if you just went on Hamilton street at Rutgers, it kept going, you'd run, eventually run into my parents' house. Um, but being 25 minutes away was really convenient. It was really great. I thought, you know what, my parents can come see me play. I can go home on a weekend if I want. So I really liked that aspect of it. Uh, but I really liked, you know, what Rutgers had to offer. And I think, both academically, as well as, you know, Rutgers was not like your typical campus. You know, it's not like Penn State where you are in the middle of nowhere and it's Happy Valley and it, this is, you're in a bubble. You know, you're, you're kind of in an environment. You're in New Brunswick, you're in Piscataway, you're, you're kind of a part of a community. And, you know, I, I think that appealed to me as well. So, I, look, it's a tough challenge when you're coming out of high school. Like, where do I want to go to college? I know it probably feels monumental for a lot of high school kids. Um, you know, and, and I think if I had advice to high school kids that are really trying to make their decision, um, you know, I don't get, don't get dazzled by the fireworks, you know, and, and I remember coming out of high school and it seems silly now to think, to look back on it, but like something that really was, you know, a factor was guys would come on campus and say, Hey, what kind of cleats do you guys wear? Hmm. And if they were like, Oh, we, we have a, a deal with Converse. It's like, I don't know if I want to go there. I kind of like Nike or I like Adidas. And it's like, you know, at that age, at 18 years old, you're not, I mean, those aren't important factors. You know, it's hard to like, to, to, to get rid of that kind of riffraff and clear the noise and focus on what's important. So I think the education aspect of it, um, you know, what kind of, what kind of kids are you going to be in school with? You know, look at the diversity of the kids you're going to school with, you know, what kind of people do you want to be around? What kind of environment do you want to be around? Um, and then from a program standpoint, coaching, the coaches are such a big part of it. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It was, I think it was even harder back in the day because you couldn't transfer. Now with the transfer portal, you know, there's much more flexibility with these college kids. And there are times where I feel like that's a good thing because a lot of times kids go to a college program because they want to go play for a certain coach, the guy that recruited you for a year and a half, you've got a good bond with, good relationship with. If you go to play for a head coach, and then he leaves to go on to greener pastures after a year or two. I think that's kind of hard, but um, I think college should be about relationships. And I think that should be a driving force in your decision. That's a great answer. Well, Sean, we're out of time. I really appreciate you getting on us today. It was unbelievable for our kids to hear from you and your experiences and, and, and your outlook too. I mean, it is a positive outlook on, on where we're headed. Um, if you want to leave one last message for our, our kids, if you were 18 today, what would you, uh, what would you tell them? Wow. Um, and if I was 18 today, um, hmm, you're going to stump me on this one. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I think when you, if I'm 18 right now, I'm so much smarter and so much more advanced technologically than any 18 year old before me. And, and I would say that 18 year, 18 year year old people right now should be more confident than ever and more confident in their ability to go out and succeed. Because if, if you've made it to 18, given everything that you've probably had to experience over the last three or four years in high school with social media and with all the pressures and with the global impact that you can get on your cell phone daily, um, I think you guys are a lot stronger mentally. Um, and I think you guys obviously have the ability to focus uh, much more than, than certainly Brady and I did when we were 18, when we were, we were your age. So, um, but I would say, uh, you know, if you're 18, get out in the world, go experience it. I know we're in a pandemic and I know that, you know, it, things are a little bit uncertain outside, but put on a mask and get your butt outside. You're not going to conquer the world by sitting in your basement or staying at home. You got to get out there and you got to be around people and you, and you got to sweat. Awesome. Sean, thanks so much uh, for your time and uh, enjoy your weekend. I'm sure we'll talk soon. All right. 
All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Brady, always great to see you, man. Are you raw? Are you raw? Thank you.